Hello everyone. Today is November 21st, 2023. I wanted to go over and create from scratch chart for a Renko. So in that way, you know exactly what uh, indicators I'm using, what moving averages and all of that good stuff. There's a couple of videos that I have done already but I think that it would be good to have a new one. The other one is a little bit old, but I I think that uh, this one would help you want to create a and replicate the indicators I use in in the video channels uh, and and use them for your own if you need to. So first uh, thing uh, you have to to do, and, and I'm gonna do step by step, so in that way you can replicate this one and not just give you the indicators, but create a actual chart from the start. So you go to the command window here, and then you go to new and create a new chart. Let's see where this one shows up right there. Then you choose any instrument. For sake of uh, this, I'm gonna choose ES. And right now that is the expiration for futures on ES, which is at 12.23. Uh, in NinjaTrader, and I'm gonna go very, very basic. If you want to look for other uh, instruments, you go into futures here and then select the future you're looking for. So here you have the bonds, NQ, uh, micro, and uh, then you, if you want to really get the micros, you can go here and get you, you get the MES for the expiration of 12.23. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to go into ES and I'm going to choose this one here and uh, that one populates uh, initially it populates a minute chart in this case you can you can do that as well but I'm going to go with Renko so first of all you have to download the Uni Renko chart and that one is uh, this one here you have to go to Ninja Trader ecosystem in uh, the internet so you you just put ecosystem Ninja Trader and that is going to take you to their site and from there you look for uh, indicators for Ninja Trader 8 and with that you can download it into your machine uh, I'm going to click Unirenko here, and then that this one is going to give you the tick trend, the open offset, and the tick, tick reversal. So what I'm going to do here is to just select yes, and then I'm going to give a couple uh, more days here. I'm going to put 30 days uh, just to make sure that I have enough data in my uh, chart so I can make uh, analysis uh, moving backwards. For this, so this one is what I would call the large bars. You can also uh, create one for two, five, ten, which is going to be a small bars. Uh, so replace this one by two, five, or ten, and then you would get it uh, there. But I want to choose for uh, ten twenty as a tick uh, trend uh, open offset and tick reversal. I'm gonna click OK here. For some reason, it created into my other screen. I'm going to minimize this one and move it to another screen mode, maybe right there. So, okay, there are some indicators that by default, I have them here. So what I'm going to do is to delete them all. And you can accomplish this just by, you know, clicking on the indicator and press delete, uh, press delete, press delete. This one here, press delete. I'm gonna take, uh, these are my levels, uh, those are drawings as well. So you can clean all the drawings uh, if you have the need to go right here, remove all drawing and objects. Control R, I believe that it is as well. There's uh, one indicator here, one indicator there, and uh, that one there. So, and there's a couple of more indicators that I wanna delete as well. This uh, icon here, where you click and then you would go into the indicators or you can right click and then choose indicators there. What I'm gonna do is to go and click that one. And so I'm gonna take this and remove, 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 and remove. I'm gonna remove them all. So in that way we can configure the chart from, from scratch. Okay, so here is my Renko chart and I have no indicators at all. So I, I do have two to three panels here where I put uh, all the indicators. So uh, I'm gonna start with the moving averages on the on the main panel or panel number one, which is this one you see here. So let's go to indicators again. And the first thing that I'm gonna choose, if there are indicators that you don't find in the ecosystem for Ninja Trader, go to the to the Discord channel 
And there are some discussions there where indicators are placed. Also, I, I respond and, and publish a couple of them there. So, but if you have any questions and or any uh, indicator you cannot find, uh, if I have it, I, I would be glad to to share it with you. If it's not proprietary for uh, you know a different company, let's go with EMA. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. So you click on any of this. And then I'm going to, I use one that it's called MA Cross Builder. Okay, so this one here has two indicators. I'm going to use uh, this one as a primary. So I'm going to put a moving average there. And here you can have the exponential moving average of 20 and 21. And I put a color of two or the, the, the plot width of two. And then I, I paint that one in, in, in red. Normally my 21 EMA or 18 EMA is in color red. Now, when I use the 21 or the 18, it depends on how the, the market is trending. Is If the market is trending strongly, then mo most likely the, the go back to the, I mean, is going to go to the 20. Uh, to, if, if it's moving fast, it's going to go to the, 18 but if it's a little bit more uh you know soft the mark the the market is going to try to come back to the 21 so there's an area in between the 21 and the 34 where you can find the 21 ema sometimes i put uh, 18 and if it reverts a little bit uh, farther and bounce off of that i would i could assume that it's the 21 as well i'm going to put here 18 so my colors are red and for the 34 is gold then uh, you go here and there's a couple of goodies that this one has that uh, I normally turn them off or turn, turn them on depending on on how busy the chart looks. Um, so you have to you, you have to make a decision on that one. So this one is the draw at cross. I don't really need to know that one. Then the color price back panel background. So what it's going to do when the moving average is crosses the other, then this one is going to plot in the back uh, uh, side. So I'm going to apply this one. So you in, in that way you can see and then I'm going to go back there. So see that those lines there. So these are vertical lines. Those are when these values are crossing there. Okay, so I'm not going to select that one this time, but there's an option for you to, to use that one as well. If I apply this one, then those lines are going to disappear. Now, the other thing is uh, that uh, the area in between these two lines uh, can be also grayed out or, or have some opacity. Right, so what I'm doing uh, here is to put a very minimum opacity there, so I can I can tell that it's uh, you know in in between them. But you don't don't really need it, so you can go there and and delete that one, and that is going to put the uh, um, you know some more clarity into your chart, and you're going to see just those two moving averages uh, moving you know together along as uh, the price is moving as well. So the, the, for this one, you would, you would need to assume that those are the, the moving averages that are, that are in this uh, MA cross builder. The other thing that I would recommend is to go to, and I do it and, and I save it as a default, is to eliminate this uh, uh, label from there. If you put that uh, the name or if you leave the, leave the name there, you're going to see into the chart that you're going to have a legend up here. So there's a tool also to eliminate them all at once. It doesn't really, you don't really need to do that. I just uh, delete this one and save it as a template. And then you go here, you uh, click on, 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 the, on the template logo I bottom or icon right here where it says template and then uh, you save. And when you save, you go, I do have, you know, default of uh, my templates for, uh, for this one. And the default there is going to save the, this uh, type of indicator there. So if you, you save it as default, it's going to create a default. And from then you can start uh, every time that you put the indicator, this label is going to be disappeared. And all the other options that you're putting in the uh, moving average there are going to show up. So most likely what I did save in here was with the 21 uh, instead of the 18. So that's the first indicator. The other one is a simple moving average for that one. I'm going to uh, put SMA and then you will see the simple moving average there. I you just uh, click in, in any portion of here and uh, any uh, when, when you open it, it's going to go, let's say you go here at the beginning, right? Click in any of this area here, click there and then type SMA 
and then it's going to take you to that indicator. So then I do have a 14. What I'm going to do is to create a 50. If you notice, I do have predefined or well-defined colors that I use all the time. 34 is always gold. 50 is, let's see here. See, in here it says SMA. I'm going to take this one and remove that SMA legend there. I'll go back down and uh, I'm going to change the color here. I'm going to put uh, my, this one is a cyan for me. So, so the 50 uh, SMA is a cyan. In time charts, I don't use the cyan. I use the yellow or, or the gold with hash in this one. So this, this one is the one I use for 50. But uh, for Renko, I use the, the just, just the cyan. Okay, so this one is the other, the other moving average I use. And you see that it's plotted right there up above. In this case, up above the, the other moving average. And then that one is giving me an, 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 an idea that the market is kind of like, in this case, it's uh, moving sideways. The cyan is going, is going down in this case. Uh, the other indicator I use is Ichimoku Cloud. And I don't use any, anything but the cloud. So if you, if I double click here and and these are the standards. If you go uh, to the you know Tenk, uh, Tenkensen or the uh, Kyujin Sen or any I don't know I don't use any of of these except for the area in between them. Let's see here. So everything is uh, and I put the red red for the area of uh, color down and green for the color up. Now it doesn't matter really what color it is. I could have just one color in between the two of them or for the, for both of them. Really what it matters is if we are above the cloud or below the cloud. I'm going to apply this one so you see that the opacity is not that uh, good here. You may have some difficulties to, to see it. If you want, you can replace this one and go and put 30% or even 50 on this one. And then uh, it depends on how busy the, the chart you, you need it to, to be. So I'm going to put just 40 there, but a little bit too much for me. So I'm going to go 30. 30 would do it a little bit better. And that way I can see the candles much easier. Okay. Okay, so Ichimoku, Ichimoku Cloud, and then there's another indicator that I use that it's uh, built off of the EMAs. It's called the Smooth 50. It's actually an, an EMA of EMAs. So you have the EMA uh, for 34. I'm going to put the 50 here uh, because it's a, a 50 EMA. If you go to the input series, then you click in there and you can choose another indicator from here. So I'm going to put EMA. So this one is not right. So I'm going to go EMA. And then now I'm showing here uh, the, the EMA. So I'm going to put 50 here as well. Market is open. So I'm keeping my eye in the charts as well. Okay. So I'm going to click OK there. And then for the color on this one, I use actually the magenta. And the line that I use here or the, the dash style is a dash dot dot. That's the one I use there. So this one is an EMA of EMAs. So EMA, the 50, the 50 moving average of the 50 moving average. So it's an EMA of EMA and apply it. And now you see that we are really in congestion at this point. Uh, it's yes, it's really moving sideways, up, down, up, down in this uh, chart. The other one I use is the MACD. I actually do have another indicator, but you can use the MACD indicator as well. So let's uh, look for MACD. The fast is 12, 26 and 9. Fast is 12, slow is 26 and the smooth is 9. So let's see if I apply this one. What do I see there? Which is, um, which is that uh, indicator of momentum? Uh, right here for the one that I use actually the, uh, and, and this one automatically plots into the down into the lower side in the in the panel too so you see where it says here panel panel two now this one has also a label and then you see that if I move this box all the way then you see that it says MAC D ES 1223 whatever right so I'm going to take this one off. I don't really like any indicators here. And then the other thing I do in here is to look for picks that in to the positive side and the, to the negative side. So you, if you want, you can uh, put uh, here a horizontal line. Look for an area where all of these uh, picks are touching. 
on the histogram probably around that area there and then if you double click you will see here that it's at 1.31 i'm gonna put a 125 see what's going on with that level yeah that would be okay so you have one for 125 now you go there and uh, oh, the other thing is that you want to lock it um so now control c and control v you will duplicate this one and then since it's locked i'm gonna double click and i'm gonna unlock it put minus one uh, point two five. i think it was 0.25 and then i'm gonna change this color and i'm gonna put a red here it's 125 right so the other one was minus 125 and then you have the, these levels up and down uh, so you know about where the indicate this indicator is so oversold you can even go a little bit beyond that and move it to 150 or two even two would be would work as well so you you need to be ca cautious and this one is just an, a guidance on telling you where this price is oversold in this case you know it's moving and it's way oversold up here and then it's coming back to the downside there so let me see what other indicators you must have in here you have the other one i do have and it's an indicator that i modified and this indicator is called the stacker well i created some of these so th this is the pm stacked ema and this is the pm renko ema so i made a modification and i put the 50 34 and 18 which is the indicators i, I just put there so this one is going to put a box uh, in this side here where all the indicators are aligned i may uh, need to do another uh, and i'm gonna delete the label there uh, once again and then I, I i would need to work a little bit on creating this one because i would like to know with that indicator if we are in the ichimoku cloud or uh, above or below so that would probably influence this one as well and change the color right now it's only the indicators but it does i'm gonna apply it and you see that now uh, we do have in this area here we do have the stack renko uh, indicator oh the, the other the other thing is that i created these tools here where you go to configure right and then you can if you go to unirenko you would see all of this and edit one of them i'm going to edit the tool and that is going to give you 2510 which is the indicator that i'm using the size of a box that i'm using there okay so 2510 for the size of two and then three and four and then this one would be if you edit it, it's going to be 4 10 20 and you can do that customization right there as well well let's move to uh two it's more automatic and that way so in that in now now we do have you know more noise in the chart that would take care of that uh, so we are in the upper side of this uh, channel with that, I believe that we have everything. Let me share one more for you. It's and, and I find I found this indicator in the uh, ecosystem, and it's called initial balance. So if you go here and go to any one initial balance, I use uh, this one from time to time, and to to de define some. Okay, so I put that the, there the 15 minutes opening range there and, and sometimes I, I i move it to the foot to the 30 minutes opening range instead of 9 30 you can you can choose also uh, 10 a.m that is going to give you the initial box and also it's give, it's going to give you some projections or extensions what i do have here is the extension one two and three and uh, these are fibonacci level extensions off of the opening range so you have uh, from the initial initial balance you have 1.272 and 1.618 and then the third one would be two right um, so i'm gonna apply this one and you will see that uh, after it calculates it gives you those levels right now off, off of the opening range on the 15 minutes and then it's moving uh and it's really stocked at the 1.27 and uh let's go to that one there let's try to make it uh, for 10 a.m and see what happens and now it gives you from 9 30 to 10 from here to 10 it gives you that this nice box and then keeps it there the range is kind of about the same because of this i uh, think so there's no difference in there but sometimes you do have difference uh, at, up until 10 10 a.m which is 15 more minutes 
you would have uh, that the price moves a little bit more. And so these extensions would be more widely spread. I'm going to go here and I'm going to really eliminate uh, this one. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take it out of here. I'm going to just uh, make it not visible. This is something that you can also do. You keep the, the indicator here, go to visible and this uh, visible bottom and you uncheck it and then apply it and it, the indicator is not going to be there anymore. And then the other one is the NP, the NTS pivots. Okay, so this one is an important one as well. Uh, if I double click in here and I don't show normally the historicals. Okay, so then uh, I don't show historical uh, pivots, but if you if you want to show them in your chart, it's going to populate a little bit more your chart. Uh, uh, but I'm interested in the in these uh, lines here. And this uh, I use the pivot daily. So this one is intraday. But if you draw in this one in a weekly or daily chart, you can choose here in the monthly or weekly there. The tool is going to tell you that if you are trying to use this one into an intraday chart, it's going to tell you that it's not going to plot anything because you need to use the weekly or the monthly for the da daily charts. I don't mess with any of this uh, with of 20. That's it. And so this one here would give you mid levels. So you have R1, R2, R3, pivot point, and then support one, support two, support three, and then the mids, right? So R1, M, R2, M, etc., etc. If you click in here, you can put this one as transparent color and it's not going to show that one in, in the indicator. I keep them with different colors. So if I apply this one here, you will see that all of those levels are going to be displayed in there. That way you know about targets. And uh, it's, right now it's actually in the pivot level uh, that you will see. Uh, let's uh, go and look at it here. We went uh, down to the SM1 and then bounce off, off of that one and kept moving up. And the other one I use is something that you need to customize yourself if you want to use it. This is actually another one. It, it, it gives colors in the background. And it's called color regions, right? So if you um, put this one and then double click on the color regions, that the color region is going to show there. And then you would get from start time to 3 p.m. to end time 8.30. So this is the default. You can go here and delete also that uh, legend there. Once you customize it, you can go and create a template. So you kind of save and then you go and put template. So what I did was to create, since there are different times for ES, CL and gold, then what I did was to create templates for each one of them with different times. So if I go there to load and I load ES in this case, that this one would open at 930 and uh, will be open all the way through the end of the day, which is 4 p.m. So I'm going to put, I put here for 930 a.m. Eastern all the way through 4 p.m. where the market closes and uh, it will give me a region opacity of 1 or 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and the one, one in time in minutes is 15 minutes. So before the 15 minutes of 4 p.m. and uh, before 15 minutes of uh, 9.30 p.m., this one is going to change color as well. I forgot to put the label before I save the template. So I'm going to delete it now and I'm going to, I'm not going to display in the data bo box. I don't want to auto scale either and I, I don't want the price markets there. So what I'm going to do is to apply it. And if you see now, the chart is going to give me a background with 15 minutes before the market opens in yellow. And then this uh, kind of darker blue would be the time when the market, this one is 15 minutes before the market close uh, on the previous day. And then uh, it's going to give me all the way through uh, beginning of the next day, which is 9.30. And then it's going to disappear and put it in black as I have this chart all the way until 15 minutes before 4 p.m. when the market closes. So right now it's uh, actually 3.15. So in half an hour, this is going to give, start giving me this yellow mark here. You can put 30 minutes if, if you want to be alerted 30 minutes before. The other indicator here is uh, called price line. This one here. So what this one is going to do is going to give you that horizontal line attached to the price uh, there. Then the other one is called Unirinko price. And what this one is going to do 
if you apply it here it's going to give you the price for this unit Renko to close and open so in that way I know that if it closes above this one it's going to give me a week out of the moving average which in this case is the 34 and if it closes below it's going to be a continuation of this reversal there uh, these are the kind of the prices and levels where I would enter a trade this one probably if it closes below this one I'm going to let it go but if it if I'm looking for continuation and breakout of this and I believe that that would be it all right if you do have any questions use the discord the other thing is that I do have an email it is mrrencotrader at gmail.com if you have any questions or you need uh, something from me that that would be the email that you can that you can use okay so this one is the one that i use is called the mah trend grab grabber so you can find this one also in the ecosystem what it does is to give you color code it it color it, the color changes when uh the uh price is within the the area or the zone of the yellow line which is the 34 ema so that's i, I put here ema 34 34 34 and then i have this color coding here green for the uh, bar condition one candle and i've been i was uh, playing a little bit uh, uh, around with this so you can copy the colors here uh, if you want to green royal blue snow so all the ones that are in the center in there are are snow and then indian red and red that's basically it so draw arrows if you wanted to draw arrows when it's going into the zone there then you can put it there you can delete it also show all uh, that's fine you can uh, leave it there uh, remove the ma bar band i do i do remove it i don't want the the moving average uh a bar over the 34 plotted there uh color zone um okay uh color bars uh so let's see what happens here so when i click it it's going to start calculating and you see that it's going to every time that that, that the bar goes into the red or gold zone area it's going to blot white and when it ticks out of that area it's going to remove the color and keep going with this green color right here right so that's an easy one to set up and i do have the following ma and the rising ma transparent i'm not showing anything in the color zone it's great but actually i don't show it because i'm not drawing the the bands actually there was a darva uh, labels that I used to so if you click here you have lower and you have upper labels there so this one is going to identify areas of support and resistance uh, based on the Darvas calculation so just uh, click here apply and you will see after calculates it's going to plot support and resistance levels in this case this one here is important because you do have well-defined area of uh, resistance up here and then you have one area of support right below in, in here what the indicator is going to do is to plot this area here and in red is going to plot this one down below so you would see if you are in in compression or 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 expansion if it's going to keep moving there was a little trick here uh, probably lots of people got destroyed on this on this one tick waiting for the uh, for the price to go up it rejected it uh, ran on stops and then moved to the other side uh, right here thank you so much for watching and see you next time